What is going on my good people and we are back in the building and this drop I'm coming at you with a wrap up of the week covering off a few of the players that have made moves before I get this show on the road. You guys know the drill, run the likes for me on this one and also join the movement if you're new by hitting that subscribe. So that brings us to the end of another week in these markets. Now although that's one of the most testing weeks we've been through together in the stock market, guys we are blessed to see the end of another week and have the weekend to look forward to. Now in this drop, I'm coming at you have a couple of our portfolio plays I want to cover off that made moves to give you guys the intel, the insights you need to continue winning with these plays as we move forward. So as always guys, I've got a jam-packed one for you, so do make sure you stick this one all the way through with me. You know what time it is. Let's get ready for the first one. So the first play we're putting in the spotlight, that's EasyJet, ticker symbol EZJ. Now we're kicking things off with this recovery play because they finally made that breakout that I told you guys was coming. You guys know over the last couple of weeks, this is a play I've been putting on your radar saying you want to grab your position in this one before they make their climb. Now I know the growth play is under heat right now, but the recovery plays still present a lot of opportunity for a lot of good returns if you guys can get your positions in now while the other investors are caught up doing other things in these markets. So strong performance on the play today off the back of good momentum in reopening news. Now there's two things I want you guys to consider with this one and other recovery plays. The first is, when you guys think about how much room a lot of these recovery plays still have to climb. If you take an EasyJet for example, you can see that pre-pandemic levels on this one was around 1,500. They're now sitting at just over 1,000. So that's still a lot of room to climb to make catch up back to their pre-pandemic levels. Now, many other recovery plays out there are, have surpassed their pre-pandemic levels. Now, logic will tell you that probably shouldn't be like this. If the company hasn't done anything to be bigger and better than what they previously used to be pre-pandemic, then you can almost guarantee some sort of sell-off is coming in the very near future to, to cool that stock price off. But that's not the case with our EasyJet play. So as I was saying, this one still presents a lot of room to continue climbing if you haven't already got your position in this one. Now, the second thing I want you guys to consider is exit plan and strategy with these recovery plays. Now, a lot of these recovery plays, they move different to growth plays. If you take a quality growth play, it's called a growth play simply because we expect that to continue growing year after year and that stock price to be gradually getting higher. With our recovery plays, you'll see that historically, they've consolidated over a number of years. Just take an EasyJet for example, you can see way back in the years, this stock price pretty much has never been above 2000. So there's gonna be a cap, there's gonna be a limit on a lot of the recovery plays. So you guys wanna have your exit strategy, you wanna try and get out near the top before you know, business and market things start getting interfering in that stock price and brings them down. So this is a play, our exit strategy is to get out of this one at 1,500 at least. When they get to 1,500, you set your stop limit. So if there's any downwards volatility, any cycling out of the recovery plays, you guys can net maximum profit. Let's move to the next one. All right guys, so we're gonna keep the energy high. Let's talk about another winner this week. That's BioCryo sticker symbol BCRX coming in at $13 and some change. This is a play, back to back green days, solid performance in one of the most testing weeks we've seen for growth plays for a very long time. So this is a play that has, still has room to run, but the way to play this one is you wanna catch them on a cool off. We know there's a lot of excitement in this one now. They came up with their earnings, earnings were strong, double the anticipated revenues. So if you guys missed the drop that I did yesterday when I went through this one, I wanna let you guys know this is a play that will get to that $20 mark next year. So as long as you guys are catching good dips in this one, and by that I mean you wanna ideally catch this one in the 11s, build your position there before this one makes its climb through the teams. This is a play, they've got their FDA approval in the US, they've got approval now to sell in Europe and Japan. So they are gonna be firing out their product internationally. So I'm expecting very good quarters going forward for this play and for this play to be moving from strength to strength. This is a classic growth play, great fundamentals and a good future ahead of it. So I'm gonna put this one back on your radar. Let's move to the next one. So we are switching gears with this one. That's DraftKings, ticker symbol DKNG. And this one's taking a turn for the worst this week. As you can see, down 15%. But they came up with their earnings today. Earnings were strong. Revenues clocked in around 300 million, blasting through estimates. They even increased their guidance to just over 1 billion for the full year revenues. But you guys know the investors, they're cherry picking things to take these plays down 
and what they're focusing on is the cost. Costs have increased, but with these hyper growth plays, that's how it works. They have the high cost, the high spending to get them on that accelerated growth path. Then they tone down those expenses over time. So over the next couple of quarters, I'm expecting the expenses on this one to come down, to cool off. So this still remains a strong high conviction play despite all the noise and panic selling that you're seeing in the markets today. Now what I'm expecting is happening is the big dogs, what they're trying to do is pull off what we call a poop and scoop. Trying to bring this one down to a level where they can pick this one up in large quantities and ride this one back up to the top. So I just want you guys to stay on game, keep this one in the portfolio. But the way I'm maneuvering with this one going forward is when these plays break key support, I like to pull a bite in strength maneuver. So while this one's in the 40s, I'm gonna let it do its thing. It's in for a turbulent ride by the way, but once it starts showing some strength, climbing back above the 50s, then I'll continue buying into this play. But as I say, below key support, I'm just gonna let this one ride out until I see that strength in that stock price. Now, one thing to consider is DraftKings is one of these plays that is very much in the public eye. So that means expectations are through the roof on this play. So naturally, anything the investors can pick out, they're gonna penalize this play on in the short term. In the long term, this still remains a solid bet with a great future ahead of it. Now I'm gonna give you guys another play that we've got in the portfolio that's not in the public eye in the same sector that is doing the business right now. And that play is CZ Entertainment, ticker symbol CZR. So on the week, up almost 10%. On the month, almost 15. On the three month, almost 30. So it's these types of plays that aren't in that public spotlight that are gonna be much less subject to these market manipulation forces and things of that nature. So that's why this one's flying under the radar. So I'm expecting this one to finish up the year at $125. So the way you play this one is to catch them on the pullback, ideally below 100. If you catch them in the 97, 98 region, that's a good time to start building your position in this play. Now you guys know, we don't just grab one play in one industry, we diversify. That's how we play the game. Let's move to the next one. Now there are two plays that my stop loss kicked me out of today. The first was Drive Shack, ticker symbol DS. Now they came up with their earnings, they weren't as strong as expected. And you guys know we don't have room in the portfolio for plays that aren't gonna show continued quarter on quarter growth. And the next one was Vuzi, ticker symbol VUZI. Now my stop loss was triggered just below support under $20, but above my average entry. Now right now, this play is just being wrapped up in that tornado we're seeing across the growth plays. Now we know this one's coming up with their earnings soon, so we'll see what that brings. I'm expecting them to do well off the back of the news of partnerships and orders that they've been winning over the last couple of weeks. So we'll see if they can keep up that momentum. And the plan with this one is to get back in the game once they start showing momentum again, once they start crossing above key support, I'll add them back to the portfolio. So if you've been rocking with the channel, you know what time it is. Question comes from Fernando says, do you think the bull run in crypto will continue for a couple of months or is there noise in the air about a pullback soon? I'm heavy in ETC. I'm finally seeing some good returns since my growth portfolio is stuck frozen in time like ham solo. So the way I operate and what I've done over the last crypto cycles is I ride the wave of momentum during the bull phase, but I make sure I have my stop limit set. I'm taking profit along the way to ensure I'm not holding these once the market turns. Then when they drop in price, I'll catch them on the cheap and ride them back up and repeat. That's just the way I like to run things when it comes to these more volatile plays. Some people like to do the buy and hold. This is just how I operate and how I play the game. Now, personally, I think the crypto bull run's got a couple of months left in the tank. Now, no one knows for sure, but certain indicators are still saying that crypto can continue running as we move forward. But there's gonna come a point this year where there is gonna be some corrections in crypto. So I just want you guys to be ready and prepped for that. Just have your strategy, whatever it is that you plan to do, just think ahead of time so you guys aren't caught off guard. So that wraps things up for this one. If you'd like to help out the channel, do run the likes on this one for me. And if you're new, join the movement by hitting that subscribe. Now you guys know over the weekend, I'm coming at you guys with a ton more content to ensure you guys are prepped and ready to crush next week in the markets with me. So I'll catch you in the next one.